Locomotives have always been tough machines, and locomotive safety has come a long way since the early days of railroading. So let's take a look at some of the features present on modern freight locomotives that help keep the train crew and the general public safe. Georgia clay all over an orange locomotive. From what I've been able to gather, this is the aftermath of a collision with a loaded dump truck. And it looks like it was quite an impact, but I'm not enough of an expert to tell you if this locomotive is a write-off or not. Most of the twisted metal is up front. And that Georgia clay is not just here on the nose, it's on the top and the sides of the engine too. Let's hope no one got hurt. I captured this thing sitting on a siding in McDonough, Georgia on October 22, 2022. The line here is operated by Norfolk Southern and goes from Atlanta to Macon, Georgia. There's definitely some damage here, but the locomotive cab itself, where the crew sits, seems to be okay, at least on the outside. Unfortunately, here in the U.S., railroad crossing accidents happen far too often. This one happened in Villa Rica, Georgia back in 2020. Luckily, according to the Highway Rail Grade Crossing Accident Incident Report, no one got hurt, including the people in the locomotive's cab. These days, modern road locomotives, the ones you see hauling massive long-distance freight trains, are equipped with the North American cab, also known as the safety cab. The wide nose here provides added crew protection compared to what's known as the standard cab, which was present on most new locomotives into the mid-1980s. The visibility on these is good, but the front-end protection could be better. This SD45-2 features a standard cab. The locomotive was built by General Motors' Electromotive Division in 1974 for the Seaboard Coastline Railroad. It's on display at the Southeastern Railway Museum in Duluth, Georgia. The wide noses on modern locomotives are built with thick steel, thicker than sheet metal. And vertical collision posts inside the wide nose provide further protection. Now, locomotives with wide noses were not all that common in the U.S. until the late 1980s and early 1990s. But north of the border, Canadian National started the trend that would eventually catch on. Its so-called comfort cab provided added safety benefits and protected the train crew from harsh Canadian winters. These stunning photographs, taken by Roger Puda, are of SD40-2s featuring General Motors' early version of a wide-nose cab. A lot has changed with Canadian National over the years, but its road diesels still feature wide noses. This locomotive was built by General Electric. Of course, some American freight engines also had this feature long before it caught on. The most famous locomotives to have wide noses were the giant twin-engine 6600 horsepower Union Pacific DDA-40X Centennials. These giants were built by Electromotive from 1969 to 1971. Meanwhile, in the 21st century, here are some of the cabs you'll see on big six-axle diesels. At least on the outside, GE's design hasn't changed much in 30 years. But EMD locomotives have evolved slightly. Here's an SD70M built in 2000. And this is an SD70 ACE built in 2007, paired with an older SD70 Mac built in 2000. Finally, one of the most modern locomotives on the rails today, an SD70 AHT4, built in 2019. By the way, there are some other EMD wide nose cabs that I just don't have images of and wasn't able to include. Pack and McDonough, there's something on the front of this engine that sticks out, literally. This is called an anti climber. As its name suggests, it's designed to stop one rail vehicle from overriding another. As you might imagine, there have been tests done to determine the effectiveness of the wide nose cab. Several videos of tests like these are available on the FRA's YouTube channel. These studies are from the early 2000s, 
the results are available on the National Archives website. There's no audio in these videos, but I think you can imagine what these impacts sounded like. The cab in this test held up well after hitting a truck hauling logs at 50 miles per hour. The metal of the nose was bent, but the researchers found that if humans were inside the locomotive cab, they would have been okay. The FRA also did tests with rail cars, and the wide nose cab performed pretty well. One takeaway from this footage is that most freight cars don't have anti-climbers, although I don't know that it would make much of a difference. Maybe an expert can weigh in on this. Now there was one test where the wide nose cab was badly damaged. Here's the locomotive hitting a trailer hauling two steel coils at 58 miles per hour. The steel coil at the back of the trailer here weighed 35,000 pounds. The impact was intense and caused severe damage. The right collision post inside the nose of the locomotive sheared. Also, after the impact, the researchers had trouble analyzing the data from the crash test dummy inside the locomotive cab. This was more of an extreme test which showed the cab's limits. There's no doubt, lighting is also an important safety feature. The lights on this unit have either been crushed or are covered in all that Georgia clay. You've probably noticed that headlights have to be on when a locomotive is in use, even during the day. And since 1997, leading locomotives that travel at a speed of 20 miles per hour or faster over one or more public grade crossings have to have functioning ditch lights. Those are the lower two lights that you see here on this CSX locomotive. And some locomotives are set up to have their ditch lights flash when the horn is blown. Now, I do not know why the headlight wasn't burning on this engine. Oh, and by the way, the Canadians were also using ditch lights before their American counterparts. Okay, now to something you might not expect, and it involves bullets and cinder blocks. So far, we've talked a lot about the nose of the locomotive, but what about the windows? According to FRA regulations, they should be able to withstand a ballistic impact with a standard 22 caliber long rifle lead bullet of 40 grains, and also the impact of a cinder block. And by the way, that goes for the front and side windows. Now, I've saved two of the most obvious safety features for last, horns and bells. Most rail fans love horns, but some members of the general public do not. No doubt we've all heard that standard crossing sequence. Two longs, a short, and a long blast held until the locomotive occupies the crossing. These days, pretty much every modern locomotive has a multiple chime horn. Designs vary, but here's one example. As for bells, some are pneumatically operated, like this one. Here's what you'll find inside. No surprises here. Looks like a bell to me. But this does not look like a bell. It's electronic and basically just plays really loud bell sounds. One other somewhat obscure safety feature is the emergency fuel cutoff buttons on either side of modern locomotives. If you've ever seen the movie Unstoppable with Denzel Washington, you might remember them shooting at one of these to try to stop the train. That was an interesting movie. We'll leave it at that. Now, there's one more thing I should say before wrapping up this video. Standard cab locomotives are still in use and pretty common. You can often see them switching in yards and industries and on short distance locals. Okay, there are some other safety devices that I just didn't go into detail about in this video. For example, alerters. They make sure engineers stay attentive while operating. Some other features worth mentioning include event recorders, forward-facing cameras in the cab, and of course, positive train control. Anyway, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.